parking spot. How do you feel about that? Yeah, you don't want to count on those every week. That's for right. sure. You, you don't want to count on those on a Friday night. Uh, that's for sure. But it did happen that way. Um, you know, it's. Uh, it. I, I will tell you from a baseball standpoint, we had seven left-handers in the lineup, and we really felt like they were going to go left-handed in that game out of the bullpen. And I really think every time, you know, there was a right-handed hitter up there, it would either have been Hudson or Bazell. You know, they're probably going, okay, the next guy's left-handed. Well, surely we'll get him out. And the guys just kept putting good at-bats together. And, um, and it just kind of worked out in our favor. I mean, I, I've never been a big believer in the right or left stuff. If you're seeing left-handed pitching every day, anybody I've ever had that's played, you know, played up to the big leagues, they said it gets hard because they don't let you face them. But if you're facing them, it's really the same. And so um, – I do think that played into that game some, uh, you know, as far as yeah. late, how they left, I think it was A-belt, how they left yeah. him in there, I think. And I understand their side of it. You're going, man, he's left. left anybody that was at the game could see that. I mean, he's got a really tough angle. Uh, he threw a ball. You know, he just he pitches from a tough angle, and guys just kept extended at bats against him and did a good job. Yeah. Um, can you do us a favor at the top of the show? And just kind of explain the way these um, warnings play out. So uh, when Davis gets hit, I don't know if it's the third or the fourth. It's pretty early in the game. The home plate umpire steps out, and after a little bit of discussion, points at the pitcher, points at your dugout, points at TCU's dugout. Can you tell us what – I mean, because to, to the way it looks up here, it's like, hey, now you can't do anything wrong the rest of the game or you might get thrown out. Is that the way that this thing goes down? Yeah. So from then on, basically, once the warning is issued, from then on, it's up to their judgment whether there's intent to hit a batter. And I think both coaches were concerned about that because at that point in the game, the command wasn't great for either pitcher. And But I do think the in their judgment, the game was at a position to protect both teams from something maybe getting out of hand because it did hit him in the helmet even though it was a slider, just basically um, from their game management standpoint, the people that are giving them instructions want them to give a warning. And so they're pretty much, uh, by the letter of the law, that's what they need to do based on uh, – because everything they do nowadays in their defense is on video. And so, you know, they'll go back and they'll look at it like, hey, why well, wouldn't – why well, wasn't a warning issued here, you know, on a Sunday, a guy got hit in the head by a slider or something like that. And, and so I think it's um, – I think they wanted to make sure um, series deciding game on Sunday, third inning, maybe fourth hey, it's inning. third or fourth. Hey, let's just go ahead and get this under control right now and make sure nobody – and everybody understands, hey, we're not going to – you know, this isn't going to get out of hand. And, uh, again, like I think the kids were uh, very understanding. Uh, I think their hitter was frustrated. He actually told Hudson that, was just frustrated in the way maybe the day was going. or you know, And, and obviously you get hit in the head, you're frustrated, whether it's a slider or a fastball, right? Yeah. And so um, I think really that's the – but as far as warnings go, as far as – the way um, the NCAA wants wants our umpires to manage the game, they want to make sure nothing gets to a point where they could go back and go, hey, you could have issued a warning here. If you issued a warning, it it nips it, you know, on the butt right there. Well, it, so that's really what they were doing. It feels a little bit scary, too, because we had the same thing with Oklahoma State, and then Brandon Beckel, after that warning, you know, yeah. miss, misses four games. Yeah. Um, and then you had – Taylor's one of the best players in the league. He gets frustrated, throws his bat. He's ejected. Coach Sarlos gets ejected. It was just a wild, wild west Sunday, man. Yeah, I don't really even know how to – I mean, again, like you just threw a bunch of stuff at me. Um, but, again, like there's different scenarios there. And I, I really think both sides were doing their best to play the game the right way umpires are doing their best to manage the game and 
they don't want to be, I mean, in their defense, they don't want to ever look back and go, hey, if we would have done this, this wouldn't have escalated to this. And their job's to de-escalate situations. And I, I would say that's what they were attempting to do. And in that instance yesterday, it probably escalated it because we were both concerned about pitcher's command and somebody getting ejected. Because, hey, if a guy gets hit, the next, next batter hitter, got hit. If a guy gets hit, are we going to eject him? And so it's interesting. I, I hate it for the fans because I know you don't want to sit there and watch all the back and forth, especially if you might not know exactly what's being said and what's going on. And That's really, funny. we were fighting for not getting someone ejected when they did get hit because the command uh, wasn't good at that point in the game. We'll come back and talk about some of the personnel that we got to witness. Gage Harrelson is the newcomer of the week in the Big 12, red hot. Brandon Beckel came back out there and did incredible things from the bullpen. We'll do all that when we return. This is Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield. And you are clear. We nail it every time, every time. We do one thing and we do it well. Since 1981, yes, time does tell. It's not just a house, it's your home. For quality work, we stand alone. Andres Brothers Roofing, we nail it. Every time. Quality guarantee, Andres Brothers Roofing, every time. Serve Pro of Southwest Lubbock knows your home is one of the most valued assets you'll ever own. So, if you're ever faced with fire or water damage, make your first call to an insurance professional and your second call to Serve Pro at 806 780 6311 for fire and water cleanup and restoration. Or visit servepro.com for more details. Serve Pro of Southwest Lubbock will treat your home right and make water damage like it never even happened. Serve Pro franchises are independently owned and operated. For 10 years, the West Texas Land Guys have been turning land into dreams. West Texas Land Guys specialize in developing raw land into builder-ready, master plan communities. Having developed hundreds of acres across 10 successful communities in the Lubbock area alone, West Texas Land Guys is one of Lubbock's premier land developers. Whether you're thinking of selling land or want to buy a lot for your dream home, we've got you covered. Visit WestTexasLandGuys.com to see how we're developing the future. For a century, the Farmall tractor transformed farming, generation after generation. Still incredibly reliable, still all purposes ever, still loved by all. To celebrate 100 years of Farmall, Case IH is giving away a Farmall Utility 75C tractor and $15,000. Sign up to win at your local Wiley Implement or visit Farmall100.com. I'm Scott Wiley. We'll try hard to earn your business, but even harder to keep it. That's it. That's all. You know Metal Mart is the place to get all the metals you need for your big projects. But did you know Metal Mart also offers building kits? We're talking 24 by 24 from $7,699 to 40 by 60 at just $25,999. Plus all sizes in between in eight different colors. With a 30-year warranty on color walls and 20 years on Gavala Plus. Your job just got a little easier with your new building kit from Metal Mart. Check us out at 4309 Idaloo Road or MetalMart.com. Metal Mart, the right materials for the right price. Looking for the best Texas Tech gear? Then shop with the official retailer of Texas Tech Athletics, The Matador. Oh, yeah. We have everything Texas Tech at shopthematador.com and enjoy free shipping. Shop for Under Armour Coaches Sideline and on the field players gear. Shop for brand names like Texas Tech Yeti Drinkware and stylish, trendy game day wear. The Matador is proud to be locally owned, alumni, and student operated. We are loyal and passionate about Texas Tech. Shopthematador.com. Before I took the field, before all the trophies, before the video game, before the no-look pass, before the success, before it all, McGavick Nissan treated me like an MVP. Patrick Mahomes here from McGavick Nissan reminding you to enjoy the ride. 30 seconds. 
Story started in 1996, and it continues because of you, our customers, our communities, and our neighbors. We are proud to be a small part of your success. But where does your story start? Where do you want to go? Whether starting a business, saving for the future, or launching your ideas to the next level, we want to help you take your first steps towards something big. Ten seconds. Mail one of our bankers today. At First Bank and Trust, we see potential, ideas, innovation, growth everywhere. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Back here at Rudy's South Loop and Sly, come by and see us anytime. But uh, this is uh, Monday night. It's been a warm day out there. The Red Raiders got some home games coming up. Already completed three home games. Going to take on Abilene Christian tomorrow, and then we'll get to the North Dakota State Bison. Coach, I got a couple questions for you. Do you know how many home games the Bison have played? I do not. I do know they're getting a big snowstorm right now, and they're they're concerned about getting out of town Wednesday, Wednesday morning. I believe so it. Need uh, to send somebody yeah, to clear the runway. George Watson's got it at zero. They don't play. It, traditionally, their first home game is whatever. I mean, it's not exactly the 21st, but I think if you average it up, it'd be about April 21st, the first time they get out on Newman Field, which is a minor league independent ball club uh, ballpark how do you know that uh, was in the league with them for five they're in the years. summit yeah they're in the summit you probably had to bus from Tulsa yes, to Fargo yeah, yeah. Um, how far is that 13 13 hours uh -huh. what that was fun well Two card games uh spades you need some you need some good bus mates spades saved my field. life yeah um, but yeah. no from year to year it would either be you had to bus to Fort Wayne Indiana and fly to Fargo, or bus to Fargo and fly to Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne's 14. Fort Wayne, Indiana is almost in Ohio. Yeah, that almost sounds like those guys are signing up for independent ball. Yeah. You know, like there's some of that stuff. Here's my next question. Those bus trips. Does uh, do you worry about J. Bob Thomas AC or uh, uh, rotator cuff over there at third base with the windmill? No, no. He can just use the other arm if it starts hurting. <laughs> Or just point. All right, so why'd you – why'd you? he doesn't point, though. It's yeah. violent. Yeah. Well, I like that. That's good. Um, how old do you think that hoodie is that he wears out there? He's got a few that are definitely getting vintage. Definitely vintage. You know, I went to uh, Coach McCaslin's press conference a minute ago and was really impressed. His wife had the uh, same sweatshirt she wears drinking coffee every morning. And uh, needless to say, I've got one I've worn since the early 90s. And I, saw, I saw that. I was like, man, that's pretty cool. If y'all see, is a Tech soccer sweatshirt. Yeah, she so. played soccer at Tech. Yeah. Um, what did you think about the weekend that uh, Gage Harrelson had? Seemed very good. I didn't – I couldn't – I, I couldn't have told you he had three hits. Couldn't have told you he was the newcomer of the week until I got here. Um, I knew he was on base an awful lot. Uh, I knew he had really good at bats through the weekend. Um, knew there wasn't many times you're going, man, you gave that one away, which is not what you want to be doing. And uh, seemed like he's moving on the right pitch a lot and put some pressure on some people. You know what I like about that one-two punch of Hester and Harrelson? It just seems to me that their approach is quite a bit different. You got a guy that's not going to swing at anything outside the strike zone and no one. He's going to make you throw strikes. If you walk him, you walk him. Or he'll barrel you up. I mean, he's got like a 500 batting average in Big 12 play. And then you got Harrelson, who goes up there and is really aggressive. I like that one-two punch to start. I think we really like it too. I mean, we like the speed. Um, you like the bat-to-ball skills with both of them. And you want um, both of them to have a little bit of mix. And so, you know, Hester's gone up there and done some of what Gage has done on occasion. And... Uh, Gage has done some also, you know, he's had some really good at-bats and gets into some counts and uh, has seen some pitches for the guys behind him also. Were you impressed with the return of Brandon Beckham? Um, it was nice for sure. The guys enjoyed it on Friday for sure. I mean, made, made finishing that game. Uh, you know, obviously uh, 
at least you felt like you had a guy out there, you know, again, like he's kind of been there and, and done it a little bit and uh, he's got some confidence. And really that was good to get him back out there after the layoff. And, and then yesterday, again, he just executed pitches and uh, put us in position. Coach, I mean, you've been upbeat. Your presser, you know, the last time you, you talked to the media as far as like before a season uh, series started, you were you were very positive and upbeat. Give me your thoughts on this bullpen as a whole. How you feel about it? Um, so I think there's a lot of talented arms down there. I, I think it goes hand in hand, starters, bullpen. I think your starters are, you want those guys to give you um, a quality start and kind of give you five or six innings. I think it makes, obviously, the bullpen's jobs in their roles better. Um, we really felt like this weekend, going into the weekend, we had a good plan for who was going to pitch when and who was going to pitch against who. And, uh, you know, and so we pretty much stuck to that through the weekend, didn't get uh, a few guys in some games uh, that you'd like to get in there. Um, but there's a lot of arm talent down there, a lot of talented guys. And, again, I think you're still in a position where um, we're in a position right now where the more you get them out there, the better they're going to be. Question from the audience and Mark, is Parrish the Sunday starter after yesterday's performance? We're going to definitely leave it that way this week, and then next week we'll kind of see what, what looks best going into Norman. What are the guidelines for the pitch clock? Some start at different points in the game, not consistent. That's from Larry, his commentary at the end. Yeah, so when the pitcher gets the ball on the dirt area, clock's supposed to start. Um, and then the pitcher pretty much has a whole 20 seconds. Uh, they want the pitcher in there, I want to say by the nine-second mark or something like that. Uh, they want him in there facing the pitcher. Okay. Um, did Tadlock pull his hammy going out to talk to the umpire? That's from Bill. I've pulled it before. Didn't, didn't pull it that day. Uh, Greg, you know, what were the umpires talking to Parrish about early in the early innings? Was it something with? Yeah, it's just he was, he's got a habit of, uh, you know, wetting his fingers, and he wasn't wiping it, I guess, or they didn't think he was wiping it on his pants. So you but can do this, once you, this. Once you put your ha fingers to your mouth, you have to wipe it off. And they didn't feel like he was wiping it off. Okay. Uh, Virginia asks, when it's chippy like that all weekend, does it help or hurt? Say that again? When it's chippy like that all weekend, does it help or hurt? It doesn't hurt anything. It, it really wasn't as chippy as, as probably the, you know, as probably as you think it was. It really, again, like we, we've had games where there's a lot of back and forth and um, it really wasn't too bad this weekend. Does it, that seem does that seem not right to y'all? Yeah, does I think it, I'm I mean, telling you, it was it was uh, it it really wasn't that bad, you know, amongst the kids. Did any really, of you want really to wasn't. fight the Horn Frogs? Everyone did. Yeah, everyone did. Yes. I, we just wanted to beat them. Yeah, yeah. We just wanted <laughs> to win the day, and it wasn't really going to be really get into that stuff and. I, I actually have a little bit of uh, appreciation for the gamesmanship, some of the gamesmanship that, that goes on within the game. So, yeah. uh, And you made a great point. And there's there's a couple guys, if they're on your team, you probably That's really the like them. When they're not on your team, you probably don't like them. That's the point. Which is, there's a lot of really good players that way. I'm sure the league didn't, there's guys in the league didn't like Jace Young at times. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. You know, and so... But, boy, you love having him on your team. Yeah. yeah. We'll take another timeout. We'll come back and get into more with uh, head coach Tim Tadlock. Talk a little Big 12. Got more questions from the audience. You can still fi fill those out as we'll take it all the way to the top of the hour right here on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield. When the game goes into overtime. You are clear. But... The game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink. Easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri.
College baseball isn't just about a game, it's about pride. Pride for our Red Raiders who leave it all on the field every game. Pride for Texas Tech, a school that has shaped the landscape of West Texas. And pride for Lubbock, a community that shares a passion for our hometown team. At Plains Capital Bank, our commitment to Tech baseball runs deep. Supporting our community is just a part of who we are as a company and as individuals. That's why we're in the crowd cheering on the Red Raiders at every game. Because at Plains Capital Bank, we're proud to be here too. Plains Capital Bank is a proud partner of the Texas Tech Centennial. Rackham Tech, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Texas Tech baseball coach Tim Tadlock. Our coaches and players compete each day to represent Texas Tech at the national level. Red Raider Club members provide the necessary resources to be our best. Thank you for giving to the Red Raider Club and supporting more than 400 student-athletes through scholarships, academic support, nutrition, sports medicine, and much more. You are the lifeblood of this department. Wreck them. At Reliant, being a part of Red Raider Nation means more than just cheering on the team. It's about being a part of a community that supports one another. As an electricity provider, it is our commitment to every customer. And it's as strong as our Texas roots. It's our promise today and for generations to come. We look forward to teaming up with you. Reliant, proud partner of Texas Tech Athletics. Reliant, PUCT number 10007. What does it take to make the perfect brisket? Baseball and barbecue lovers know that the perfect brisket needs the right wood. Rudy smokes all of their meats using their delicious signature rubs in 100% oak-fired pits. Get your real Texas barbecue fix today at Rudy's or on the web at rudys.com. At Simmons Pump and Supply, pumps are our business, but people are our passion. Your water supply is critical to the well-being of your crops and your family. When it comes to irrigation and house wells, no other product has been designed by and built for West Texans for 66 years. The next time your well stops producing, make sure your contractor calls Simmons Pump and Supply for the highest quality solution for your water well applications. Or visit SimmonsPump.com to find a contractor in your area. And most importantly, Rackham Tech. Stay up to date with all of your favorite Red Raider teams. Find everything you need on TexasTech.com, including scores, schedules, game recaps, and much more. Don't forget to follow us on your favorite social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and even Snapchat. Be sure to use the hashtag Reckham to join the conversation. If you have any questions about your favorite Red Raider team, visit TexasTech.com or call 806-742-TECH. Texas Tech Red Raiders, fearless champions live here. 30 seconds. Red Raider fans, Texas Farm Bureau Insurance wants you to throw out the first pitch at an upcoming Texas Tech baseball home game. Register to win by visiting RedRaidersContest.com. There's still one opportunity left to throw out the first pitch. May 6th versus Sam Houston State. Winner will receive two game tickets. 10 seconds and throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Enter to win by visiting RedRaidersContest.com and be a VIP thanks to Texas Farm Bureau. Picnic tables waiting for you here. I like Rudy's too. You can kind of hide in a corner if you'd like. Brisket. They got the, all the, the pork. Pork loin, pork ribs, baby back ribs, pulled pork. And then you can turn those into sandwiches. Or you can just get the meats and then make your own sandwich. Two kinds of sauces. All of the sides. And, and the pickles and the onions and the jalapenos. Got to, got to get a jalapeno or two as you come through and get your meal at Rudy's. Don't forget, if it's too late for you right now, you're driving around Lubbock, they got the breakfast tacos waiting. Just grab and go. Or they can make them fresh right in front of you. That's a great choice that you have here at Rudy's South Loop and Slide. Get the big cup and get the diet. Dr. Pepper, that's what I would do. Coach would go coffee. Coach, do you? I kind of ask you this in private. Um, I'll ask it in public because it's not a big deal. Do you have a... Oh, uh, it's not. Do you have a... Uh, a temperature level, say, all right, it's 85, I can't drink that coffee. Or it's 85, I can still drink the coffee. Is there a limit? 
of how hot it could be? Yeah, like the temperature outside. It's 95. I'm not going to drink that coffee. Today. Oh, you mean temperature outside? Yeah. No, no, no like, absolutely not. It doesn't. It could be 100. We could oh drink some gosh. coffee. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there's you watch a lot of baseball games when you do what we do, and so sometimes at the end of the day you need a kick, you know, and you need some coffee. You ever? Uh, there's a guy named, by the way, his name's Jim Walton. He's the old bureau guy. I believe he lives in Tologa, Oklahoma. We'd have to ask Coach Hayward exactly where, but he's been around baseball for 60 years, I would say. For all you guys, he this guy drives a Cadillac that's at least a 1970s model, nice. maybe 60s model, scouted up to about six years ago. And anyway, used to be a common courtesy of his and mine that if we were at a game together and the concession stand had coffee we'd bring each other a cup of coffee he's the old cowboy he wore his cowboy hat scout and just one of the true gentlemen of the game and didn't use a stopwatch didn't use a radar gun like he'd go to a workout and he'd be there and he he would uh like if guys were running right here and all of y'all were scouts y'all have your radar gun he'd be standing way over there he'd go timmy come on over here i'll I'll let you know if they can run. No stopwatch, nothing. Just watch them. They're like, yeah. And he knew. Sure enough, he'd stand over there and he'd go, yep, that one can run. And he'd go, that one can hit. Do you ever write any of it down? Or just no, he off? had, in his business, you had to write it down. Oh, yeah. In our business, you just got to get the good players. Yeah. So <laughs> you don't have to document everyone. In his, he's working for the Major League Scouting Bureau. and So he's collecting data for all, oh. all, all the teams. So does it say Jordan can run? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I love it. There you uh, go. Jack wants to know, is there an update on Dylan Carter? We see Dylan all over the place running around, but uh, any kind of update on him? I think he's making progress. That's what I would say. I mean, I, what's it been, about three weeks probably? Yeah, uh, two or three weeks. Well, let's so, see. Do, 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 that was against Iowa. He's been taking ground balls during batting practice with – Three weeks. With, um, let me think about this. With a with a glove on his right hand. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and he's ran some balls down too in center doing that. I'm not sure he couldn't do it. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was uh, on March 12th, so we are three weeks in and yep. uh, got a little break from conference play coming up here. Not too big, but um, uh, when. Wants to know if the winds are 70 miles per hour, will we play? We're planning on it. Um, we really feel like those are going to be gusts, and so we're hoping that. And we asked, we did, we did suggest we move it back if they wanted to. They don't. Last time I checked, they did not want to move it back because our forecasts are that they'd get down to in the 20s from eight on. So, I mean, generally, and generally it'll. They have to go with the high on the gust, right? So you're hoping it's in the 30s, 20s, or 30s. So yeah, it's supposed to be wild tomorrow. Planning, planning on playing. Uh, there's just not many days you can play other than tomorrow as far as these the two teams the getting together. Yeah. Right. Uh, some of the fan anger was due to no player handshakes on Sunday, only coaches. Is that normal? I, I, it's, that's news to me. No, that's not normal. I didn't know we didn't shake hands. Um I guess I was too busy shaking coaches' hands, so uh, or shaking our players' hands, and really didn't observe that. And it's not normal, but uh, I guess they felt like we didn't need to shake hands. Hmm. Are you Is sure there, we didn't shake hands? I, I'm not. Sure. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. So uh, we were, that doesn't seem very. Uh, yeah. Oh well. Is yeah, the, during COVID, we yeah, didn't shake hands. No, You're right. Elbow bumps. Is there no NCAA rule controlling time for a base runner to exit after flying out, <laughs> etc.? Yeah. TCU number 11. Yeah, there might be moving forward. I did see in a big league game the other day that a guy got a strike called on him because the guy between first and second took too long. And I couldn't tell you the rule, but evidently there is a rule. That was maybe opening day. So um, there you go. Usually, that that'll come down, come down to our game. Do you uh, 
say right now you're the czar of college baseball and you say we can we can play the shift or we can not play the shift what do you do well first of all i don't believe i'm the czar and that's probably not going to happen and they're probably not going to go off what i say so that's why i, I think you i think you ought to be able to stand where you want to stand um if you feel like there's you know to me like um there you, you give up something to get something and so if you're willing to give up something uh, to get an out or vice versa. I think you ought to be able to do it now The the interesting thing in the major leagues now is they can still play a guy over there on left-handed hitters They just have to give up something in other words an outfielder has to go over there And so they there can still be guys positioned on the grass, but it has to be an outfielder And so I guess it's how much conviction do you have the guy can hit the target to make the guy hit the ball there and so College baseball, I'm not sure pitchers hit the target enough to really play where, you know, they play in the big leagues. So, um, so I, I, I like the shift. I mean, I'm, I'm not against it. <clears throat> Scott wants to know who currently is your favorite pitcher. I guess this could be anybody. Yeah, anybody in any league, you're yeah, saying? Any, anywhere. Yeah, I mean, I'll go with, I'll go with guys that pitched here that are on the cusp of pitching in the big leagues. How's that? Davis, Killian, Killian, Parker, Duggar got signed by the Rangers the other day. All those guys. All right, we'll, we'll go with all those guys. Uh, are there any plans to replace the scoreboard or expand the seating? That's from Brenda. Um, expanding? You know, I haven't heard anything as of right now. No, I, I think we've talked about the scoreboard uh, because of the malfunctions earlier in the year. I think that'll happen. Okay. I'm going to come down to one more. Yesterday's <laughs> game was as bizarre as I've ever witnessed at Dan Law. Do you have any comments about the game that won't cost, won't get you in trouble from Mike? Um, surely that's not Mike Ryan, our no, event no, manager. No, no. I mean, he probably wants to know too. And so, no, again, like uh, – it's, uh, I mean, to me, again, both teams, there was, uh, they jumped out to a 3 nothing lead. And, I mean, obviously we fought to get back in it. And there were some things that happened in there that made the game seem like it was extended a little bit. And um, was proud, of the, again, of our guys' resiliency to hang in there on a Sunday and uh, get the job done. Can you kind of tell us the story of Tracer Lopez again? Just with his youth and him stepping into uh, where he should be a senior and he's playing shortstop for Tech. Yeah, he, so he's um, from down around Waco, um, reclassified. So he, he should be at Cameron Yo High School right now. Um, should be playing shortstop for a high school team. And uh, there was a time back during um, pandemic that he, he committed to us. And then, then there was a time moving forward for about a year where you could see that he possibly passed a lot of the kids that were in the 22 class that we could literally look at it and go, hey, he's a better player than all these guys. He's a better player than these guys in the 23 class even, but mainly the 22 class. And so we looked at it and we're like, why don't we present to him to come to school a year early and reclassify? And, and so he took a double load. Um, it basically been starting his junior year of high school and got in a position where he could graduate early, very similar like to a basketball player doing it, and put himself in position where he graduated early. And uh, what really benefited him compared to like Will Burns, Will did the same thing, but Will played high school football in the fall. In other words, the fall of 22, and then came at Christmas time. Mm. And really, so Tracer got a lot of reps and a lot of uh, was around our guys. And um, that fall really helped him, I think. I mean, I think it helped him. and But I think also his work ethic and his passion for the game helps him. It's both of them. It helps both of them. But um, Tracer really worked hard to me. Um, through the pandemic, through 21 and through 22, and really just became a better baseball player than some guys that were in the 22 class. And 
again, if you're sitting there, you're going, hey, you're putting a team together, you're going to, you're going to explore all, all options on how to get guys here. And what's interesting is about the transfer portal and all those things, we did make a commitment to, to a bunch of young guys and, you know, bring them. And, and we passed a bunch of guys are in the portal. You just saw some of them play the last two weekends. I mean, you can literally sit there and you go, man, that Porter Brown was a good player. Um, Austin Davis, good player. Richardson, good player. Ryan Vanderhey, good player. And so there's a lot of things, again, and we tried to get Vanderhey. But my point is, is we pretty much made a commitment to bring those guys and really excited about the future for them. And, uh, but again, like with Tracer's story, that's really how it comes about is, is you're looking a couple years out, you always have kids that are committed and you got guys that are coming. Well, if the guys that are committed are a year younger than the guys that are coming and they're better, why wouldn't you ask them if they wanted to do that? And uh, takes a very confident young man to do that. It, right. For, first and foremost, when a kid either passes pro baseball out of high school, in other words, a normal graduating senior, and they pass the opportunity to do that, it takes a kid with a lot of confidence to do that. For instance, like both Youngs, a lot of the guys we've had here, you know, just confidence to, hey, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to develop, I'm going to get better, I'm going to put myself in a position to be as close as I can be to being a big leaguer when I get done with college. And so, um, and then to take a kid that's uh, in that scenario, you know, you got to have some tools to do it too. I mean, the tools, the tools allow him to do it. I mean, you, know, you probably don't realize it by watching him, but he runs a lot better than most people would realize and uh and obviously the you know the the ability to catch the baseball is something that it's kind of lost art and uh, in the middle of the field and he's one of those guys that can do that batting 346 and the big 12 average is even way higher than that it's climbing up to around 500 and then doing what you got to do which is playing a solid shortstop that's a fascinating story on tracer lopez we'll come back after this and we'll talk about the upcoming games and the Big 12 standings a little bit. And then we'll be uh, heading closer to getting Tim Tadlock on his way. This is his show on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield. At Reliant. You are clear. ...means more than just cheering on the team. It's about being a part of a community that supports one another. As an electricity provider, it is our commitment to every customer. And it's as strong as our Texas roots. It's our promise today and for generations to come. We look forward to teaming up with you. Reliant, proud partner of Texas Tech Athletics. Reliant, PUCT number 10007. Another season of women's and men's college sports is underway. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2023 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. What does it take to make the perfect brisket? Baseball and barbecue lovers know that the perfect brisket needs the right wood. Rudy smokes all of their meats using their delicious signature rubs in 100% oak-fired pits. Get your real Texas barbecue fix today at Rudy's or on the web at I'll Rudy's. I'll take this next break at about 52. Red Raider fans. 52 and a half. Sounds good. The first pitch at an upcoming Texas Tech baseball home game. Register to win by visiting RedRaidersContest.com. There's still one opportunity left to throw out the first pitch. May 6th versus Sam Houston State. Winner will receive two game tickets, a pregame field experience, and throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Enter to win by visiting RedRaidersContest.com and be a VIP thanks to Texas Farm Bureau. 
This is Texas Tech Athletics Director Kirby Hoka. Red Raider fans are some of the best and most passionate fans in the nation, and there's no denying it. There is also no denying that supporting our sponsors is one of the best ways to support the Red Raiders. Year after year, when businesses support the Red Raiders, they help provide funding for the many needs in Tech Athletics and make games like the ones you're listening to on this Texas Tech Radio Network possible. So next time you're in need of a product or service, show your Red Raider spirit and support the companies that support Texas Tech. College baseball isn't just about a game, it's about pride. Pride for our Red Raiders who leave it all on the field every game. Pride for Texas Tech, a school that has shaped the landscape of West Texas. And pride for Lubbock, a community that shares a passion for our hometown team. At Plains Capital Bank, our commitment to Tech baseball runs deep. Supporting our community is just a part of who we are as a company and as individuals. That's why we're in the crowd cheering on the Red Raiders at every game. Because at Plains Capital Bank, we're proud to be here too. Plains Capital Bank is a proud partner of the Texas Tech Centennial. Rackham Tech, member FDIC. When the game goes into overtime. But the game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. 30 seconds. Hi, I'm Texas Tech baseball coach Tim Tadlock. Our coaches and players compete each day to represent Texas Tech at the national level. Red Raider Club members provide the necessary resources to be our best. Thank you for giving to the Red Raider Club and supporting more than 400 student athletes through scholarships, academic support, nutrition, sports medicine, and much more. Stand by. This department, wreck them. Back here at Rudy's South Loop and Slide, where they've got all the barbecue ready for you and your family. Come by and see them. Right over here by the mall, just off of the South Loop, you can come by and get the uh, brisket, all the turkey and the chicken, spicy chop, sandwich, you get all those things here. And don't forget the breakfast tacos in the morning, brisket. They got the regular bacon and, and sausage, breakfast tacos as well. So come by anytime. Well, as long as they're open, Rudy's here for Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock. All right, coach, do you feel like you've, you know, cleared any hurdles with the teams that are ranked in this league already being in the rear view? Or would you rather play those later on in the season? Because this was an oddity, a little bit of a difference, because you go Oklahoma State, Texas, TCU up front. Do you have any feelings yeah, toward that? I mean, really, to me, like every time you go out and play a Big 12 game, um, it's never been easy. you got to earn the right to win. And generally, the pitching and defense is good on both sides. And never have put a whole lot of stock in what the jersey says. It's more, more so about going out and playing at the highest level we can and trying to build as much margin for error with fundamentals of the game and uh, really make it more about how we're playing and how we're evolving compared to who we're playing. And, uh, and so that's, that's never been uh, – I got a lot of respect for all nine teams within our league and don't want to sit here and say we've right. cleared a bunch of hurdles just because we've played those three teams because there's, there's some other ones that are really good baseball teams. I mean, the next one on our schedule played the national championship game or series last year and so and just a bunch of those Stanford. kids are back and and so there's there's good baseball top to bottom yeah just split with stanford and that's another thing uh, they get rolled in the first game i think 23 to something and then come back and win the next two OU does and then yeah uh end up taking well, each team takes two of those you got stanford coming up abilene christian what are you looking for tomorrow night out of the wildcats will be the first time we've seen them this year yeah, it's uh, they're having a good year. I want to say they're 22 and six, have won maybe six in a row, something like that. I know they just beat um, maybe Corpus and Nebraska this past weekend. Those guys are doing a good job, and um, seems like our midweek games against them um, have always been good games. And so, um, you know, I know 
last couple years. I know last year they had the Huffling kid in the bullpen, the big left-hander out of Edmond. I think the guy's like six. He's at least six seven, and he's been he's given us trouble. And so um, you want to you want to play as good as you can, and again build some margin for error in there in the game, and uh, put good at bats together, pitch, play good defense, and every day we go out. I mean, again like. Um, Whoever you play, you want to get a little bit better each day. Um, North Dakota State coming up on the weekend, they are, I've been told, a lot better than their record. They've played a bunch of close games, but, again, they've played no home games. So just, just overall trying to shore it up, get ready for you know, what's coming next, Stanford, Oklahoma, West Virginia. What are you trying to improve on here during this time? You're trying to get guys rested, trying to get better out of the bullpen. Where is it at? Yeah, it's fundamentals in, in every phase of the game. Again, you could apply that to any phase of the game. You're just trying to, um, if you're if you're genuinely trying to be great at it, you're trying to be great at fundamentals. Whether that means how a guy goes about his work on the tee, whether that means how a guy throws his bullpens, whether that means how a guy takes ground balls. I don't know if anybody saw the video of Josh that was mic'd up couple days ago I mean they were going hey what time is it it's like 10 30 in the morning and I'm sure it was a night game and you know guys that are great at playing defense guys that are great at this game really love the process of simple things like getting on your knees and catching a ground ball getting your eyes behind the ball putting a ball in the tee and backspin at the back net and uh, backspinning a throw when you pitch I mean whatever Whatever the situation is, um, guys that guys that are great at it love that process, and that's what you want guys to get to where they understand. Like to to keep evolving, you got to keep keep trying to be great at those fundamentals. Here's a question for you: How in the world did uh, ACU get Nebraska on a Saturday, yeah, April first? Yeah, I really don't know how that came that about. I haven't looked at that yet. Down there at Adelaide, must have been. Nebraska needed somewhere to play. Corpus was going there, something like that. Mm. Yeah, they um, and Nebraska's had a good. I mean, I know they've they've played pretty good this year, so that's a good win for them. Well, you've got it right too. You're right on the money with the uh, record: twenty-two and six, seven and two in the conference, which they're in the WAC now, and they've won six straight. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we mentioned the pitching rotation going to stay the same. We're going to be uh, we, this well, week. Well, this week it is. Okay. Went back and we kind of firmed up that it was Parrish on Sunday. But right. Girton. Girton Molina Parrish. Okay. We're going Petty tomorrow. And so uh, I mean, tomorrow will be a staff day. Everybody will get to throw a little bit unless Petty just goes out and throws nine, which would be fine too. Is Erdman okay? Erdman's fine. Okay. Just hadn't had, it's, just, it's just tough to find innings. I mean, really, with the single midweek game, we'll definitely see Erdman um, for sure, you know, next week. I mean, okay. and we'll try to get him in some games. We're trying to get everybody in there. It's A lot of guys. It's, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of guys, and there's only so many innings, which is a good problem. You want that problem to get worse is what you want. You yeah. want, you know, those starters start eating up six, seven innings if you can. All right, let's give it up for Coach. He's done. Appreciate it, Coach. Okay. All right, that's Tim Tadlock. We'll wrap it up when we come back on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield. Western. You are clear. Final break. When high winds and debris damage your roof, there's only one company to call. Andrus Brothers Roofing. ABR has been in business for All right, 35 um, years and are part of the Lock Area Roofing Contractors. 5741, it will start. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay. okay. Roofing. Andrus Brothers Roofing. Every time. Quality guarantee. Andrews Brothers Group. Every time. At First Bank and Trust, our story started in 1996, and it continues because of you, our customers, our communities, and our neighbors. We are proud to be a small part of your success. But where does your story start? Where do you want to go? Whether starting a business, saving for the future, or launching your ideas to the next level, we want to help you take your first steps towards something big. Call or email one of our bankers today. At First Bank and Trust, we see potential, ideas, innovation, growth everywhere. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
West Texas Land Guys is one of the region's premier developers with projects in Lubbock, San Angelo, and Abilene. West Texas Land Guys have developed hundreds of acres and 10 communities in Lubbock alone. To see some of our work, visit the vineyards at Escondido or come see us in the 2023 Parade of Homes in Sedona. Whether you're thinking of selling land or want to buy a lot for your dream home, we've got you covered. Visit WestTexasLandGuys.com to see how we're developing the future. Dylan. At inter yes, sir. Provide one-on-one -on -one attention. Rigs. <laughs> Hey, let me tell you, huh. my brain is fried. <laughs> I sat here right. and thought for two minutes and couldn't pull it. <laughs> Jeez. Well, call us at Thank 806. You. Very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. To or visit us at interimhealthcare.com. Interim Healthcare, the champions of your health. Hey, oh, that's crazy. Life is I said unpredictable. It was madness. It can get crazy. I said it was it mad. It truly takes a team to make life happen. That's why ABC sure is was. my bank. Thank you. Their mobile app keeps me on track so I can bank on the go. When life throws me a curveball, I can always count on them. Bank on better with ABC Bank. Member of FDIC. The Texas Tech Alumni Association stands stronger than ever before because of the thousands of alumni who are committed to our great university. We begin with our first graduating class in 1927, and nearly a century later, we continue to serve Texas Tech through programs, services, and scholarships for all of our loud and proud Red Raiders. We appreciate our loyal alumni for making a difference. If you're not a member, consider being a part of our story into the next century. Belong today. You're one of us. Thank you. ASCO equipment knows roads don't wait, job uh -huh. sites don't wait, and deadlines yeah. don't wait. That's why at ASCO, we're on it, faster than the speed it. of our customers' needs. Thank so no matter so what much. you're digging, grading, or loading, we've got a full line of case construction equipment to help you get the job done. You can buy or rent, and we'll service and support. And because it's case construction well, equipment, the, the you radio, know it'll be comfortable, it powerful, fast, and Kevin versatile. Harlan. At ASCO, yeah. we're on it, whatever it is. Wow. 30 seconds. This is for the men who never can, settle. You can, uh, the ones who miss the fairway all yeah, day. Yeah, I, I and feel still like pull I out the big yeah. stick. I the type of guys who will always prefer to be behind Dale? the grill than in front Dale, of the great camera. To meet you. And the men who never I let their friends forget much. about a high school Thank nickname. You. This is the Lodge Man Tower. I'm here. This. 10 seconds. Who wants to settle was for only a single TV? Four years. With more TVs, I'm already going to screen, on seven. Plus our fabulous scenic views. There's more to watch at Twin Peaks. Next down. Back to wrap things up here one more time on Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock. Just a few minutes left. Hey, I want to take this time to congratulate Grant McCaslin. He's the new basketball coach at Texas Tech taking over and having his press conference today. Very cool to see him. He is grounded and smart, and I think uh, Red Raider fans are going to love him. Had a chance to talk to him today one-on-one -on -one. so that was a lot of fun congratulations to him and his family they're going to make lubbock home as far as the baseball goes red raiders back on the diamond tomorrow against abilene christian should be good again they're 22 and 6 on the year 6 30 is that first pitch our pregame show will start at six o'clock at rip griffin park and then this weekend let's move it up a little because of the easter holiday Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with the North Dakota State Bison. The Thursday and Friday are evening games at 6.30, 6.30, and then on Saturday at 2 p.m. with North Dakota State. So happy early Easter. Thanks to Dylan Riggs back in Jeff City. For Tim Tadlock, I'm Jeff Haxton. Until tomorrow night, God bless, guns up, and good night from the Hub City. You are clear, Jeff. All right, great job. Sorry about my brain fall apart. <laughs> You're all right, man. Good talking to you. You too. See you later, man. See you. You've been listening to Red Raider Baseball with head coach Tim Tadlock. Red Raider Baseball is presented by...